What's up everybody? I'm Logan and this is Heirloom Builders. Welcome back to my off-grid homestead. Today we're going to take a look at this off-grid battery system. We've got eight six volt batteries running series parallel to create a 24 volt battery bank that powers my entire house. Today, we're gonna to look at the maintenance and care required to live successfully off the grid and extend the battery life of these flooded lead acid batteries and get the most bang for your buck. Let's do it. Hey everybody, my name is Logan Parker. I've been living off the grid for the last eight years with a small 1640 watt solar system and eight flooded lead acid batteries. The best way to optimize your battery's performance and extend their life is by giving them regular battery care and maintenance. Today we're going to talk about the best practices for regular battery care. And I'm going to show you what happens if you're a slacker like me and don't do quite enough regular maintenance on your lead acid batteries. We are charging, we're using this inverter to charge our batteries right now off of a generator, which you can hear outside. The terminals, this is a seven year old system and the terminals have, you know, this, this acid that you see on each one of these terminals might have actually corroded the terminal enough where it's not getting a good charge. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up today. That is really, really wild. Um, you know, I kind of want to see what in the hell. Yeah, it's just like totally, totally corroded. Mm -hmm. When I was going to clean this, I nudged this wire right here that's supposed to be connected and it totally sheared off. So this terminal totally corroded through off here. This is the connecting Don't touch that. Negative. the negative to the positive to make these in series. And this whole string right now, instead of being 24 volts, is only pulling back to the inverter at six volts. This string right here is 24 volts, just so, so long as all these are right. still connected. So we really need to pull these off and check through. So even if it doesn't look good, I'd say we, we replace as many of these as we can. Yeah. way to avoid this battery system failure is with proper routine maintenance. Let's get into it. Lead acid batteries are able to store and deliver significant amounts of power by using lead and lead oxide sheets alternatively stacked together that create electrical potential when submerged in sulfuric acid. 
For a proper explanation of how lead acid batteries work, check out Bill Hammock's video on lead acid batteries. Watering. During the process of charging and discharging your lead acid batteries, water is consumed and hydrogen gas is produced and vented out the top of the batteries. When enough time has passed and water is consumed, the water level in flooded lead acid batteries will drop and expose those lead plates inside the battery casing. Lead plates exposed to air will corrode and ruin their performance. They need to stay submerged in the sulfuric acid solution in order to work properly and prolong the life of your battery. The proper solution should be about three parts water to one part acid. In order to maintain the solution, it's best to top off the water in your flooded lead acid battery cells about once per month. Use only distilled water and follow your battery manufacturer's guidelines as to the appropriate fill level. Don't try to add sulfuric acid. Any other water like tap water or even rain water will have minerals that harm your battery and cause it to self-discharge rapidly. In our case, we have Rolls Surette batteries that need to be filled about one inch from the top of the battery case, right at the bottom of this little plastic cylinder inside the battery. We use a funnel to fill the batteries without spilling and make sure to wear safety glasses in case there's any splashback. Make sure your batteries are fully charged before you top them off with distilled water. This ensures the proper electrolyte balance within the battery and keeps it running smoothly and in good condition. Storage. In order to get the best performance out of our batteries, we stored them inside our house in a little wood box. If you do store them inside, it's very important to vent the hydrogen gas to the outside air, which is exactly what this 2-inch pipe right here accomplishes. If you store them outside, avoid places that may be exposed to freezing temperatures, which can destroy the lead plates and ruin your batteries. Over the past 8 years, I only cleaned the battery cables and posts superficially about once a year, and quite frankly, that's pretty amazing that they've lasted this long before corroding to the point of no return. Testing your battery's state of health. The most reliable way to test your battery's state of health is to use a hydrometer. A hydrometer measures the specific gravity of the acid solution inside your battery. What you do is you take samples with this little pipette right here of the battery acid solution in each one of these three cells on each one of the batteries, drop it onto the plate, cover it, and peer through the scope into the daylight, and it will refract and give you a reading 1.15 all the way up to 1.30, and that's gonna determine the state of charge of your batteries. And we want these batteries, each one of these batteries, to be in, in within seven hundredths of one another. So for example, they shouldn't read more than, you know, from 1.2 to 1.27, otherwise, we might need to replace a battery or at least consult our battery manufacturer to see what our next moves are. Let's check out this on another video. For now, let's talk about voltage. For a quick check, you can use a voltmeter to measure the open circuit voltage of each battery. Place the positive probe on the positive battery terminal and the negative probe on the negative battery terminal. The battery should read within one-tenth of a point. If they're widespread, like in these batteries, you'll need to equalize the batteries. Equalizing the batteries is basically when you supercharge the batteries with a higher voltage, which essentially makes them boil. This process breaks up the sulfate crystals that build up on the lead plates. It also reverses the acid stratification, where the acid ends up concentrated at the bottom of the battery and makes the solution more uniform in the end. This ultimately helps the battery charge and distribute power more efficiently. You can do this with your solar array, like I often do, or with a generator. 
Trojan Battery has an excellent reference manual and tips on equalizing, so make sure to check out the description below for more information. The least fun part of maintaining your flooded lead acid battery bank is cleaning the cables and battery terminals. When exposed to air, the acid crystallizes on the battery posts, which can interfere with battery charging and power distribution. It's best to keep up with the cleaning so it doesn't get out of hand. Otherwise, you'll end up like me and have to replace corroded ring terminals or replace the battery cables altogether, and sometimes destroy the batteries, which can get expensive and cause your battery's state of health to decline rapidly. You might even lose your batteries altogether. It's actually pretty easy. Safety first. Make sure to disconnect your power to the batteries before you attempt to clean them. I like to take a teaspoon of baking soda and mix it in a cup of water. And then take a toothbrush or wire brush and clean all of the terminals. The baking soda neutralizes the acid and makes it safe to work with. Although I still wear gloves and safety glasses. It's really best to disconnect the bolts and battery cables so that you can completely clean all surfaces of the terminals and the posts. <clears throat> then simply dry them with a clean rag, reconnect the battery cables, and you're done. Really not that hard. Over the years, I neglected to disconnect the cables and didn't really get more than a surface cleaning. I didn't even realize that my battery cables were almost fully corroded until I started having trouble getting my batteries fully charged. It's kind of hard to notice until it's too late. But don't wait that long. It's really bad for your batteries to discharge so deeply and will quickly ruin them. I had to buy new terminals, a crimping tool, and heat shrink collars to rebuild every single battery cable. But I got lucky and was able to reuse the same cables, and I caught it before my batteries suffered too much. But don't push it. Batteries are expensive to replace. It's much easier to keep up with them with regular care. You'll get the best performance and peace of mind. I hope this video is helpful. If so, smash that like button and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more information about living off the grid and building better homes. As always, y'all, thanks for watching. Until the next one, peace out.